Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Anita Kamra Verma from Kirorimal College, Department of Zoology, Delhi University. And today I will be speaking to you on cell adhesion molecules. This is module 18 of the immunology series. The learning outcomes. After this lecture, a student will understand the importance of cell communication, types of junctions in the cell and may be able to discuss their functions in detail. They should also know the difference between the junction and be able to identify them visually from the given figures. They should appreciate and be able to define cell adhesion molecules, their superfamilies, discuss their functions as well as the role of integrins, adherins and selectins. The role of cell adhesion molecules in cell migration has to be understood and explained. The possible pathologies of defection in cell adhesion molecules have also been discussed. The role of chemokines that are a family of small proteins secreted by a variety of cell types has been explained too. Further, their biological functions, role and importance of their receptors have been deliberated upon. It is interesting to conceptualize how the 100 trillion cells in our body share a key feature within the cells of the multicellular organisms, what they have and that most of the bacteria and single celled protists lack. Our cells feel and communicate with each other, exchange innumerable chemical signals, they coordinate their behavior in such a way that our body functions as an integrated whole rather than as a colossal collection of singular cells acting individually and independently. The hallmark of all multicellular organisms is the ability of the cells to communicate with each other. For this we must understand the mechanism of cell communication. For communication there are intracellular receptors, there are cell surface receptors which include the chemically gated channels, the ion channels, the enzymatic receptors and the G protein linked receptors. The other physical contact within the other cells include cell surface markers, tight junctions that include desmosomes, adherent junctions, communicating junctions like the gap junctions, plasmodesmata. Plasmodesmata are present only in the plants. Cell junction is a connection between the neighboring cells or contact between the cell and the extracellular matrix. It is called a membrane junction and are classified into the following types. Tight junctions also known as an occluding junction, B an anchoring junction and C a communicating junction which includes a gap junction. There are another set of signal relaying junctions which include the chemical synapses. Structurally, the cell junctions provide strength to the epithelial cells, transmit stresses by pulling on the cytoskeleton. Some of them can stand a higher stress which is in the tissue. So what we understand is there are two types, either a cell to cell contact or a cell to matrix contact. Cell to cell also can be in two types. That means adherence that forms the anchoring points and connects the cell wall of one cell to the adjacent one. But a desmosome is another cell contact which forms an anchoring point that connects components of the cytoskeleton of the cell to the adjacent one. But cell to matrix that is a link between the cell and the extracellular matrix. The important molecule families which will include the cadherins and the integrins. After the structural classification, we must understand the functional classification of a cell junction. For a functional classification, we think about the occluding junctions or the tight junctions which are present only in the vertebrates, the septate junctions which are present in the invertebrates. The anchoring junctions consist of acting filaments which have the attachment sites that is cell to cell adherence, cell to matrix which are called as focal adhesions. The intermediate filament attachment sites that is cell to cell junction are the desmosomes and cell matrix junctions are hemidesmosomes that is half the desmosomes. Communicating junctions 
include gap junctions, the chemical synapses and the plasmodesmata again present only in the plants which is not the purview of this lecture. Coming to the tight occluding junctions, they are also called as zona occludens, a cell to cell junction that seals the cells together in an epithelium in such a way that it prevents even small molecules from leaking from one side of the sheet to the other forming a virtually impermeable barrier to the fluid, seals gaps between the cells to make them impermeable that is in the intestine establishes polarity of the cells that means the cell has an apical surface a basal surface it keeps the surfaces intact prevents backflow from one side to the next please remember they are present only in the vertebrates this also consists of linear array of several integral proteins the junctional proteins or the occludins and the claudins these are the members of Ig superfamily that is the immunoglobulin superfamily which are transmembrane proteins. Now looking at the function of only the tight junctions, what have we understood? They, are, they give strength and stability to the cell, they make the cells selectively permeable to ions, they fence the cells that means they have a function of allowing only a few things to move, they maintain the cell polarity. This is important in blood brain barrier. Claudin, they are also the junctions which are present in intestines and the kidneys forming uh, formerly present in the loop of Henle. Now, this figure explains the models of a tight junction. That means it consists of transmembrane proteins, the occludin and the claudins that merge the outer surface of the epical and the basolateral domains of the adjoining plasma membranes appearing as belts and these belts seal the extracellular spaces between adjacent cells. They effectively prevent passage of water and water soluble molecules. The claudins and the occludins appear to zip two membranes together and are only stabilized by another protein known as spectrin. It is connected to spectrin by adapter proteins that those are the zonula occludins 1 and zona occludin 2. They cause electrical resistance across the epithelia. The primary function is to form a more or less tight lid sealing the intercellular spaces from the luminal environment. Now it is located between the epithelial cells. So lining of the intestinal mucosa as well as the urinary bladder are very important examples of this. Coming to anchoring junctions, they physically attach the cytoskeleton of the adjacent cells or to the extracellular matrix. Since they are mechanically attached, they are prevalent in tissues subject to mechanical stress that means skin, muscle, epithelium. They are belt zonular adherence so that means these belts are thicker or belt desmosome and they appear as spots or patches that is the desmosomes or the macula adherence the latin is the adhering spot. That means macular adherence just means a spot where the adherence will occur. Although anchoring junctions are similar in structure and function, they contain, they contain distinct intracellular attachment proteins and transmembrane linker proteins. The transmembrane glycoproteins are known as cadherins that join the cells and each cadherin further inserts in to the plaque form that a on the opposite side of the plasma membrane. They partially cross the intercellular space and then connect to the cadherins of the adjoining cell. So adherence junctions in the epithelial cells generally form extensive zones and these zones are called as adhesion belts. The cadherins are the intermediate filaments, they also called as macula adherence. The cell structure specialized for cell to cell adhesion. Here they are known as desmosomes, they link the cytoskeletons of adjacent cells but the hemidesmosomes anchor the epithelial cells to the basement membrane by single pass transmembrane glycoprotein called as cadherin and hemidesmosomes are they are just like the desmosomes but they are half the desmosomes. A number of attachment proteins facilitate the attachment of the short cytoplasmic end of a cadherin to the intermediate filament in the cytoskeleton. 
while the other end of the cadherin molecule extends externally from the plasma membrane linking directly with a cadherin extending from the adjacent cell in a firm clasp binding the cells together. The connections between proteins fastened to the intermediate filaments are far more secure than the connections between free floating membrane proteins. Generally, proteins are super suspended inside the membrane by comparatively weak interactions between the membrane lipids as well as the non-polar portions of the protein. Two cadherins namely desmoglein and desmocholin and adapter proteins which are called as placoglobin as well as desmoplatin. These are linked to the epidermal keratins. Cadherins bind the membranes of the adjacent cells in such a way that gives rigidity as well as strength to the entire tissue. Their function is to assist the epithelial surfaces, resist separation during various contractile activities as especially when the food moves down the intestines. It holds tightly together and also to confer mechanical strength to resist stress. The figure explains categorically everything which has been discussed. Coming to hemidesmosomes, they are similar to the desmosomes, but they do not link the adjacent cells, but they are half the desmosomes and are attached to the basal surface of the cell, which is the basal lamina. It has a totally different molecular structure because the transmembrane glycoproteins in hemidesmosomes are integrins rather than cadherins which were present in the desmosomes. Integrins attach to the intermediate filaments on the inside of the plasma membrane and are made up of a protein called as keratin. The integrin molecule attach to one of the many multi-adhesive proteins such as laminin which is a resident within the extracellular matrix thereby forming one of the many potential adhesions between cell and matrix. Hemidesmosomes are composed of integrins that is outside that bind to the collagen and laminin 5 that is present in the extracellular matrix. The cytosolic site consists of a plaque that is composed of an adapter protein plectin that attaches integrins to the keratin filaments. These are focal, focal adhesions that are composed of the cell to matrix junctions that connect the actin filaments of the cell to the extracellular matrix. The transmembrane protein that bind to the cell membrane to the matrix are also the called as the integrins. Its function is to attach the cells to the basal lamina which I have already explained that means there are different types of epithelial cells which can find firm attachment on the basal lamina. Further we move on to communicating junctions. Mostly the cells communicate with each other or with their joining cells through direct connections wherein a chemical signal passes directly from one cell to another. In the communi communicating junctions it establishes a straight physical connection that binds the cytoplasm of two adjacent cells allowing movement of ions or small molecules from the cytoplasm of one onto the other. In animals, these direct communicating channels between cells are called as gap junctions, but in plants as I have said they are called as plasmodesmata. Gap junctions are made of membrane proteins called as connexins that forms tiny fluid filled tunnels called connexons that connect the neighboring cells. Connexins are made up of six identical transmembrane proteins that are arranged in a circle to form a channel through the plasma membrane that protrudes outwards. That means it is several nanometers from the cell surface. So a gap junction will form only when the connexons of the two adjacent cells align perfectly thereby creating an open channel across the plasma membrane of both the cells. Plasma membrane of gap junctions are not fused together as tight junctions but are separated by a very narrow intercellular gap or space of a diameter in the range of 2 to 4 nanometers. So gap junctions provide passageways big enough to allow movement of small molecules such as amino acids 
and even simple sugars to move from the cytoplasm of one cell to the other. But they are small enough to avert the passage of large protein molecules. The connections hold the plasma membranes of the paired cells about 4 nanometers apart in contrast to more or less direct contact between the lipid bilayers in a tight junction. So, the channels are not static, they are dynamic as they can open or close in response to numerous factors that is calcium or hydrogen ions. This pairing helps a damaged cell to and the plasma membrane to become leaky and the ions will as much as calcium when the concentration is high outside the cell it can flow into the damaged cell and closes the channels in the gap junction. This further isolates the cell thereby preventing the damage from spreading to other cells. So, this cartoon summarizes all the junctions present in the heart, sorry, but this further isolates the cell thereby preventing the damage from spreading to other cells. This cartoon summarizes all the junctions which are present in adjacent cells and can be understood in a glance whereby we have all the junctions which I have explained categorically where you understand the tight junctions, the gap junctions, the adherence, the belts, the desmosomes as well as the hemidesmosomes. Now coming to cell adhesion molecules, what is adhesion? It is just a fundamental role in a cell regulation and communication and is essential for maintenance and development of tissues. Cell to cell communication is extremely important to maintain the tissue integrity. Cell adhesion is the ability of a single cell to adhere to another cell or to the extracellular matrix. It is imperative to comprehend how cells interact and coordinate their behavior in a multicellular organism. As per the cell adhesion model which is explains that the cells can appear sticky they display greater number of chemical bonds on its surface. So, adhesion molecules have to be transmembrane glycoproteins which act as connections between the external and the inside of the cell. They have three domains, the extracellular domain which will bind to the extracellular matrix or to the adjacent cell membrane. It will behave as a receptor from the outside for enabling cell signaling. The central domain traverses the cell membrane and the intracellular domain transports signals which are being carried to several through the several ligands into the cytoskeletal proteins, similar molecules, enzymes or anything can be connected to the metabolic pathways within the cells so as to give transcription factors. So, adhesion between same types of cells involves the binding of CAMs, those are the cell adhesion molecules on adjacent cells, regulating the basic processes such as contact, inhibition of cell growth, cell differentiation and apoptosis. These developments ensure precise tissue organization in growth, tissue regeneration in adults. That means homophilic interactions that is interaction between identical cell adhesion molecules will mediate mechanical adhesion among cells, but also can propagate intracellular signals. Now cell adhesion is also involved in enhancing signals that regulate the cell cycle, cell migration and cell differentiation, cell survival. From the immunological point of view, adhesion molecules are involved in effectively every process of cell interaction, antigen priming, antigen recognition, cell activation involving the thymic selection to the cytotoxicity and the lymphocyte recirculation. So, the interaction of CAMPs and the chemokines that are involved in the first three steps of neutrophil extravasation are also shown. So, what do I understand that cell adhesion molecules are categorized into four protein families, the selectin family, the mucin like family, the integrin family and the immunoglobulin family. These are also termed as immunoglobulin superfamily. 
Coming to selectins, these are membrane glycoproteins belonging to the selectin family which have a terminal lectin like domain that facilitates the binding of these molecules to specific carbohydrate groups. Primarily, selectins interact with silated carbohydrate molecules that are generally linked to the mucin like molecules. Three molecules labeled L selectin, E selectin, and P selectin are included in this family. The circulating leukocytes preferentially express L selectin ex except the activated T cells, but E selectin and P selectin are generally expressed on the vascular endothelial cells. P selectins are also found in secretory granules of platelets. The initial adhesiveness of leukocytes to vascular endothelium can be attributed to these selectin molecules. All the selectin molecules are closely related structurally. That means the end terminal a carbohydrate recognition, the C-type lectin domain, as well as the variable number of repeats linked to the complement regulatory proteins. The ligands are generally carbohydrates that are presented on the glycoproteins and their respective ligands that is the E selectin silated Lui X that is represented as S L E X and the S L E A. The P and L selectin are represented as S L E X, S L E A and the sulfated polysaccharides. The pattern in which these carbohydrates are presented on the glycoprotein helps to regulate the selectin binding. Coming to the mucin family, the mucins are a group of high molecular weight glycoproteins that are heavily glycosylated, serine and threonine rich proteins. They contain more than 50 percent carbohydrates. The side chains of the oligosaccharide are linked through oxygen to the serine and threonine. They contain a tandemly repeated domain of amino acids that are rich in threonine, serine and proline. Mucins can either be membrane bound or can be secreted. Their stretch structure enables them to present ligands of silated carbohydrates to selectins. Generally, L-selectin on the leukocytes distinguishes the silated carbohydrates on the two mucin-like molecules that is based on CD34 and the glycosylated cell adhesion molecule 1 that are expressed on the same endothelial cells of the lymph nodes. PSGL1 is another mucin-like molecule abundantly found on the neutrophils, interacts with E and P selectin expressed specifically on the inflamed endothelium. That is, it is very important for the inflammatory response. Coming to integrins, integrins are heterodimers and they are also transmembrane glycoproteins. They are functional integrins that consist of the alpha and the beta subunit. They are non-covalently bound and expressed by the leukocytes. They facilitate both adherence to the vascular endothelium as well as cell to cell interactions. They are involved in cell extracellular matrix adhesion as well as cell to cell adhesion. So, both the subunits contribute to ligand binding. The integrins are categorized according to the subunit they contain and about 18 alpha and subunits as well as the beta subunits have been identified giving 24 unique integrins. Different leukocyte populations express different integrins thereby facilitating these cells to bind to various cell adhesion molecules that belong to the immunoglobulin superfamily which are expressed alongside the vascular endothelium. Mostly integrins need to be activated prior to their binding to the respective ligands with high affinity. So a large number of possible specificities for ligand binding is based on a different cation dependent that is calcium, magnesium or manganese dependent. Generally ligands comprise of the extracellular proteins, they are the fibronectin, laminin, collagen. These are recognized by multiple integrins or members of the immunoglobulin superfamily. The significance of integrins in extravasation of leukocytes is demonstrated by the leukocyte adhesion deficiency model that is an autosomal recessive disease that shows an impaired healing of the wounds and have a characteristic bout of recurrent bacterial infections. Now, as we have to understand the cadherin superfamily, 
The cadherins are also cell to cell adhesions that are generally facilitated by the cadherins at the adherence junctions. That means claudins are present at tight junctions and at in the immunoglobulin like cell adhesion molecules are present along the intercellular boundary although some adherence molecules such as nectins are localized both at adherence junctions as well as at the tight junctions. Cadherins on one cell binds to the identical cadherin molecule on the adjacent cell involving a calcium dependent homophilic interaction which is evident in one of the figures. A conformational change to form occurs at the cadherin cluster laterally at the cell to cell junctions that appears like a zipper and the zipper along the cell fringe that actually promotes tight adhesion between cells. So, cadherins are associated with various intracellular components that mediate intracellular signaling and modulate the organization of the actin cytoskeleton to provide the dynamic forces necessary for correct tissue morphogenesis. So, cadherins joins the cells by binding cadherins on the adjacent cells. This is known as the cadherin zipper. The cadherin catenin complex links the actin cytoskeleton. So, the classical cadherins are focused as at the adherence junctions. They modulate additions through dynamic interactions with the actin cytoskeleton. The adherence junctions therefore hold the epithelial cells together in a form of adherence belt between the epithelial cells in the small intestine. The belt like junctions encircles each of the interacting cells that means the cells on the lateral sides are completely bound. So, the strength of the cadherin cadherin binding is important as it mediates formation of many embryonic structures. The immunoglobulin superfamily of cell adhesion molecules is the most abundant family of cell surface molecules that are expressed on 50 percent of all the leukocytes as surface gly glycoproteins which are belonging to the Ig superfamily. Their structure has the characteristic repeat domains which are analogous to those found in the immunoglobulins assembled from the compactly packed barrel of strands. Superfamily signifies proteins whose corresponding genes are derived from a shared primordial gene encoding the basic domain structure. These genes have evolved independently and do not share functionally or genetic linkage. The IGSFs that is the immunoglobulin superfamilies are typically calcium independent transmembrane glycoproteins. By natural selection and mutation, the immunoglobulin domain has evolved many different functions including behaving as receptors for growth factors for the constant region of the immunoglobulin and as adhesion molecules. Each glycoprotein has an extracellular domain which contains various immunoglobulin like intra chain disulfide bonded loops with highly conserved cysteine residues, a domain that is transmembrane followed by an intracellular domain that interacts with the cytoskeleton. Members of the Ig superfamily comprise the intercellular adhesion molecules called as ICAMs, platelet endothelial cell adhesion molecules called as PCAM1, the vascular cell adhesion molecules called as VCAM1 and the cell to cell adhesion molecules which is called as the NCAMs. Essentially they bind integrins or other members of the immunoglobulin superfamily. Some adhesion molecules contain a variable number of immunoglobulin like domains that include ICAM1, ICAM2, ICAM3 and VCAMs that are expressed only on the vascular endothelial cells and bind to the various integrin molecules. MAD CAM1 expresses both Ig like domain and mucin like domains thus forming an important cell adhesion molecule present on the mucosal endothelium that can direct the lymphocyte entry into the mucosa. 
This enables binding to the integrins by the immunoglobulin like domain and to selectins by the mucin like domains. The neuronal cell adhesion molecules have been implicated in neuronal patterning too. Coming to the immune responses, they are principally dependent on the endothelial cell adhesion molecules which play an important role in inflammation. Members of the Ig superfamily that are overexpressed in chronic, inflama chronic inflammation are ICAM1, ICAM2, VCAM which serve as the surface ligands for LFA1 and VLA1. Integrins and the endothelial cell T cell interactions. The other crucial ligands for ICAM1 are probably the two integrins LF1, LFA1 and the MAC1. These are expressed in the leukocytes. Consequently, ICAM1 mediates the leukocyte, ICAM1 presenting cell adherence. ICAM1 is also found in a biologically active form in serum, probably due to a proteolytic cleavage from the cell surface being elevated in patients which are who are suffering from cancer, septic shock or from a transplantation. ICAN1 is also expressed on endothelial cells as well as epithelial cells, keratinocytes, monocytes, lymphocytes, eosinophils, dendritic cells, hematopoietic cells, fibroblasts as well as liver cells. Inflammatory cytokines enhance the expression of ICAM1 in the vascular endothelial cells. Deregulation of ICAM1 expression leading to increased levels in triggered by the infections or by tumor necrosis factor alpha, interferons alpha, interleukin 1 and the reduced expression was observed when the inflammatory factors such as glycocorticoids are induced. Alternatively, acting, activating the leukocytic integrins LFA1 and MAC1 at the inflammation site may subsequently lead to leukocyte adherence to the localized endothelium that is considered to be an important step for leukocyte migration at the site of inflammation. Coming to chemokines, these are a third group of soluble chemoattractants known as chemokines. Interleukin 8 was the first chemokine to be described. Chemokine includes a large number of proteins along with their respective receptors. It consists of a superfamily of small peptides containing 90 to 130 amino acid residues that explicitly regulate the chemotaxis, the adhesion and the activation of various leukocyte populations and subpopulations. Hence, they are the major regulators of leukocyte trafficking. While few chemokines are primarily involved in the inflammatory cascade, others may be constitutively expressed and possibly play an important role in homeostasis or in the development process. There are lymphoid chemokines that help direct the hemostatic trafficking of the cells into and through the peripheral lymphoid tissues that is CCR7, CCL2 and CCL19, CXCRS5, CXCL13 or there are inflammatory cytokines that generally assist in recruiting cells to the site of inflammation known as CXCR2, interleukin 8, CCR2, MCP1, CCR5, MIP1A. So, the lymphoid organs, they produce the housekeeping chemokines along with some tissues and the non-lymphoid sites like the skin where they control the normal trafficking of lymphocytes like determining the correct positioning of the leukocytes that have been newly evolved by hematopoiesis which is arriving freshly from the bone marrow. The thymus constitutively expresses chemokines and normal B cells. Lymphopoiesis is also dependent on the suitable chemokine expression. Chemokine mediated effects are not limited to the immune system only. Mice that lack either the chemokine CXCL12 also which is called as CADF1 factor or its receptor display key defects in the progress of the heart and the brain. So generally the members of chemokine family have also been shown to play regulatory roles in the development of 
blood vessels that is angiogenesis as well as in wound healing. Chemokines cause the leukocytes to spread into different tissue sites by inducing the adherence of these cells to the vascular endothelium. Once they migrate into the tissues, the leukocytes are attracted towards the chemokines that are highly localized causing targeted recruitment of the effector lymphocyte and the phagocytes to the inflammatory sites. The accumulation of leukocytes at the site of infection coordinated by the chemokines is very critical in mounting an immune response at the inflammatory site or at the site of infection. There are more than 50 chemokines and around 15 chemokine receptors that have so far been identified which include molecules such as regulated on activation normal T expressed and secreted that is Rantis or the monocyte chemokine attractant protein the MCPs and the lymphoactins that is they were discovered by Meagher 1998. All are involved in the recruitment and activation of immunocompetent and inflammatory cells to the injury site. So, the four conserved cysteine residues of the chemokines are described based on the position of two of the four invariant cysteine residues and nearly all can be categorized into two distinct subgroups. The CC subgroup chemokines, they have conserved contiguous cysteines. The CXC subgroup, these are the chemokines where the conserved cysteines are separated by another amino acid. X. Chemokines are a major family of trivial heparin binding chemotactic cytokines that are secreted by the cells. They comprise of four such subsets the CXC, the CC, the C, the CX3C. This classification was established on the distances of conserved cysteines and the X in an amino acid. Therefore, several membranes constitute the CXC and CC groups, but not for the C and the CX3C chemokines. The targets of CXC chemokines are also primarily the neutrophils and the lymphocytes, but the targets for the CC chemokines are non-specific. That is, they include the macrophages, the basophils, the eosinophils as well as the dendritic cells. The CXC family comprises chemokines, that is the CXCL1, CXCL17 and the CC family comprises of the CCL1 as well as the CCL28. The C family consists of XCL1 to XCL2 and the CX3CL1 belongs to the CX3C family. That means innumerable cytokines that are released by a stimulus caused by a viral infection or bacterial infection example LPS induced that is the lipopolysaccharide or the IL-1 and TNF-alpha pro-inflammatory cytokines are also expressing these chemokines. So, the biological role of chemokines just explains the pro-inflammatory nature that helps navigate the leukocytes to the site of injury infection during an immune response. Others may be hemato or homeostatic in nature and possibly regulate the migration of cells during the retained tissue maintenance. So, migration of leukocytes is the key function of chemokines and even a slight signal guide these cells towards the chemokines. That means, lymphocytes are routinely directed towards the lymph nodes by these chemokines during an immunological surveillance that promoted their interaction with the antigen presenting cells to help identify any invading pathogens. They do not require a stimulus for their secretion. Therefore, these chemokines are termed homeostatic chemokines. Specific pro-inflammatory chemicals or the chemokines, they require precise stimulus to ensure their release. That is, a viral infection is required or the bacterial infection is required or any chemical agents as well as any strong stimulators. So, pro-inflammatory cytokines that include IL-1 and TNF-alpha promote their release and serve as chemoattractants for neutrophils, leukocytes, monocytes and some other effector cells. 
thereby directly regulating the movement of these leukocytes to the injury site or to the site of inflammation. So, pro-inflammatory chemokines mimic the cytokines in similar ways in wound healing patterns and chemokines may further activate the leukocytes that are involved in both innate as well as it acquired immunity just as the cytokines. Some chemokines play a role in the development and also modulate angiogenesis and cause cell differentiation and maturation. So, it is important to understand the chemokine receptors as the action is mediated by these receptors which exist on the cell surface membrane of all the leukocytes. Chemokine receptors belong to a family of G protein coupled receptors comprising of seven transmembrane domains, two subgroups of receptors, the CC receptors that recognize CC chemokines and CXC receptors that is the CXCRs which are capable of recognizing the CXC chemokines. Similarly, to the other chemokines, these receptors are further divided into four subsets which I had already discussed, but this receptor consists of CCR which is specific for CC chemokine, CCXCR for CXC chemokine, XCR1 for the C chemokine and the CXC, CX3, CR1 is fine tuned for CX3C chemokine. The CC chemokine receptor family contains again 11 members that is CXC chemokine receptor family has the 7 membranes and the other membrane each for both C as well as the CX3C chemokine receptor family. Signal transduction is expedited via the standard G protein dependent pathway that activates the heterodimeric large G protein which generates such potent second messengers which are known as the cyclic AMP, inositol phosphate 3, calcium dependent pathway and are activated by small G proteins. So, neutrophils have the CXCR1, 2 and 4 receptors while the eosinophils have the CCR1 and the CCR3. The, the resting naive T cells exhibit different kinds of chemokine receptors, but the activated T cells have CCR1, 2, 3 and 5. The CXCR3 as well as 4 and many others. Undoubtedly, a cell may respond to a chemokine only if it has a receptor that recognizes it. Subsequently, a differential expression of chemokine receptors by leukocytes coupled with the production of distinct chemokines by target tissues and sites provide opportunities for the differential reg regulation of activities of different leukocyte populations. Th1 and Th2 subsets of the T helper cells can be differentiated by their characteristic patterns of cytokine production. These subsets may dif display different profiles of the chemokine receptors. Th2 cells may express CCR3 and 4 and a variety of other receptors are expressed by the Th1 cells, but on the other hand, the T helper 1 cells also express CCR1, 3 and 5, but the Th2 subsets do not express them. So, the chemokine receptors that belong to the vast family of G protein receptors has been described in this cartoon which consists of seven transmembrane receptors which bind extracellular ligands and consequently initiate an intracellular signaling. When a chemokine binds to a receptor, a calcium signaling cascade is created resulting in the activation of small GTPases. This figure just explains the patterns of the expression of some principal chemokine receptors on different classes of the human leukocytes. So far, the greatest variety of the chemokine receptors has been observed on activated T lymphocytes. So, in summary, I can explain that the cell adhesion is quintessential process in the human biological system. Understanding the events relating to cell attachment and detachment provides 
cru crucial information regarding important functional processes in the human body that may help to identify the problems that might trigger specific diseases. There is enough scientific evidence that supports the view that the leukocytes and the endothelial cells are associated cell adhesion molecules are extremely crucial in the vascular dysfunction and tissue injury associated with a variety of inflammatory and cardiovascular diseases. Progress in this field has fundamentally resulted from the association of the unique immunological and molecular biological processes that may provide opportunities of new diagnostic and prognostic viewpoints and therapeutic interventions triggering or targeting the cell adhesion molecules. Thank you.